Dave. Gareth, how's it going? I was going to say, back again, but you looked after us a little bit whenever we had the class tractor, the 650. And during that period of time, we had, well, it was a relatively new to class thing, the, the big Torian. And we liked it. Was she a 14? 11 or something? She was a 14, 10. Yeah. 14, I just 14, can't, 10, I'm getting confused. 14, 10, right? But we thought she had a wee weakness. We thought she was lovely in the pit, and we had Big Jimmy, our resident <laughs> tester, Big Jimmy Mackay on her. Really liked her in the pit, but we just thought she was a wee bit sluggish and slow going up the road, and we always attributed that to the four pot. This is different, this is different. You have a new machine out, so our ones have been running it for a week is your machine, it's Class's machine, but Erwin's have been doing a few demos this week. Yes, exactly. And yeah. it just happened to work that we had Jimmy gathered up today and they wanted him to try it. And we're here at Grass Bay HQ Silage, but it's a 1511. This one's a 1511, yeah. Well, what makes it? And it is a lot better because I pushed a couple of loads earlier on, a wee sneaky couple of pushes. It's got to get up and go. It sure has, yeah. So basically, like you say, you know, a few years ago we were out here with the fourteen ten. Mm -hmm. So we've been we've been in partnership with Lee Bear since twenty seventeen. Um, so it's relatively the, recent. It is, yeah, relatively yeah, recent. Yeah, yeah. yeah, five coming up on five years yeah. now. But um, it's been in constant development, and we've been constantly making those tweaks and little changes to make it more and more suitable to the contractor's machine, pushing up silage, um, all that kind of thing that we're, we're and, used and to. And I in the suppose Lee Bear as a company historically they were designing machines for quarries and loading so all of their torque points and everything you want to talk about z linkages all those things was all focused around i suppose that one point so when bringing it into the ag market now they've tweaked it around for the ag because the part of weight ratio was the big thing to yes. note on this yes it's right up there over 16. Yes, so I suppose I suppose to put it into into context, really, if we compare the fourteen ten you had previously to this one here, the fifteen eleven P, um, your fourteen ten was a four cylinder engine. So that's your, a four and a half liter, isn't it? I think four and a half liter, yeah. four cylinder John Deere engine. You're into a six cylinder engine here now. You had um, one hundred and fifty five horsepower previously. We're now up to two hundred and twenty eight horsepower in the fifteen eleven P here behind us. Um, you had 170 litre per minute hydraulics, whereas now you're at 228 litre per minute hydraulics as well. Bigger ground drive pump, um, bigger hydraulic pump obviously as well, so more pushing power, more hydraulic power. And that, and to put it into the figure that we hear quoted so much, even with other manufacturers, is this horsepower uh, per tonne ratio. Yeah. It's right up yeah. there at 16.2, I know I mentioned that a few minutes ago, that is impressive. Yes, yes. Because so as, as the machine stands here now with the 14 foot OCE fork on the front, um, I think we have it here, yeah. 16.2 horsepower per tonne power to weight ratio. So it's, it's right up there where it needs to be to perform against our key competitors in the market. Mm -hmm. Well, it's right. I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be the first to jump in and say, I'm not saying you have to have that, but it sure does help when you're on a pit and you're looking to move. Yes, yes. And that's now. 6 cylinder John Deere engine and 220 so we know and we know that engine is happy 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 out they're now putting more horsepower actually in there than some of the tractors with that engine yeah so yeah. that engine's not even under pressure there yeah. but there's a really really neat feature VMAX I think that's the word is it surely right? is it surely is so what that means we, is so I can <laughs> yeah so I can limit or I can adjust my speed so the bottom line I set it for 7k so foot throttle to the board 7k going forward which means i'm getting plenty of revs to work all my hydraulics but when i nip around the reverse i'd have set it 12 13k so that means i'm pushing up at a nice speed when i go straight to reverse when you do that with your gearbox you're in the same speed in the same reverse. Gear. your gear yeah. always governs your speed so yeah. Yeah. she's allowing you to open her up right up the 12 because that's quite often you're taking your time working it up the clamp and the reverse flat yeah, yeah. <laughs> for the next load or whatever it is that is neat now i'm yeah. going to give you that when that's neat function yeah. and that and it's it's completely adjustable as well so your your forward speed and your reverse speed are totally independent of one another what yeah having said that i was messing about and i switched it off and i didn't even really feel that i needed it but 
you know, the VMAX is on, yeah. but by the same token, there will be certain situations where you start to maybe get really steep, you start to get under pressure, you'll want more revs, so you could knock it on for something like that. Yeah, but that, yeah. that's a neat function. Exactly, yeah, and what we're finding on the demos that we've been out and, and, and done, and obviously a lot of guys who are coming from different coloured machines onto it, um, some guys like the VMAX, so you have that option there that you can use if you want. Other guys like to just um, drive it using the inch and pedal. So your left foot now on this machine is, is an inch and pedal. So if, as you're climbing, if you want to reduce your speed, to keep your revs up, you can use that left foot to slow down the speed. And another big thing that we find with the hydrostatic as well is you're using the brake pedal far, far left. You don't really need it that so much. You don't you need it. You're not, you're not, you're not walking where, forward yeah. brake and I'm pushing your revving up. might do that the other way. And I went, but that's <laughs> what happens. Yeah. So essentially you've got your six cylinder horsepower, you've got the horsepower per ton, 1511 is what it's called. 1511P. 1511P, what's yeah. the P mean? So the P stands for power. So we have our standard 1511, six cylinder engine, 188 horsepower, um, about a half a ton heavier than this machine here. And then your 1511P is... Steroids. Yes, exactly. Lighter, jacked up. but jacked Everything, up. bigger drive pump, bigger hydraulic pump, more horse. So if you're ordering one yeah. for a quarry, you don't get the P. <laughs> if you're ordering one to push grass, you get a P. Yes. Probably about within 30 reason. grand a year. Like, but within, <laughs> within reason, because the 1511 standard is still re a really good performer on the pit as well. Still well able to push grass. But is that so, still um, coming, is that coming with a four cylinder or still a six, six cylinder? So it's all moved yeah. up to that six cylinder. All moved cylinder up to the now. six cylinder, yeah. yeah. How have you been finding getting it out and about? Um, I know I know it's been on a, a few different demos around uh, the North through Irwin's there, and I know um, it's going to one tomorrow as well, which we might call out and see it on, you know, and that's self-propelled, because what we're doing here today isn't technically a self-propelled. <laughs> it's three trail harvesters. <laughs> so, But it's a great opportunity for Big Jimmy to get a good play with it, because sometimes when you land out to a man, you're trying to educate him on how to drive a machine, you don't want to be under pressure. And he's under yeah. pressure with some of these big monsters or harvesters sending it into them. Whereas this is going to be an ideal opportunity for a man to have, because he can do a bit, they can step out, and you can step in and show him a few things. Yes, so that's kind yes. of what we're... Are you hopeful that it's going to do well? I think we are, yeah. I think definitely we're, we're where we need to be with the machine now. We've taken on board um, all the feedback. We've looked at all the competitors, looked at what we need to do and where we need to get to, to perform on, on the silage pits. Um, and we've made yeah we've made big improvements and I think this machine here now is is where it needs to be to compete with um, with what's out there on the, the market. The 1410 was on a Z linkage. Surely was. You've yeah. went down the parallel linkage route here. Do you think for pushing grass? That's yeah. What's the thoughts there? Horses for courses. It really is, yeah, but yeah. Um, you know, again, there's a lot of machines out there pushing grass on Z bars, getting on absolutely fine, um, and. A lot of machines out there in parallel as well. The majority, when you look at ag spec, the majority of it is parallel linkage. So that's why we've brought in our demonstrator here as a parallel linkage machine. Most fellas can jump up onto it and it's what they're used to, the characteristics of the linkage and that behaves how they would expect. And also then with the parallel linkage, we're, we're kind of maintaining that, um, that flick and force, the flick and power right throughout the arc of the, um, the arc of the rake. That's that, because with your, with your Z linkage and every Z linkage, there's a dead spot and not a dead spot, and you're not going to find out with your parallel linkage. Yeah. And if you're at the point where it quits working well, you're definitely. Yeah. You're doing, a, both, right, you're doing both, a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they both have their pros and cons. They both work. Um, it's just yeah. And what does smart loading mean? What that refers to is inside in the screen. So it's a new updated screen in the cab as well, from what you would have seen yeah, in the 1410. Yeah, yeah. Also, the cab is bigger. It's worth mentioning as well. Um, and that smart loading, what it, what it is, it's, it's all your, your operator features in there. So on the joystick, you can have a preset um, setting for your lift height of your boom, a preset drop, and a return to dig as well. So like with just one click of the joystick, she'll go to all the different positions that you want it. So. Aye, and if you're ever, if you're ever, and I understand buck rake and silage isn't necessarily like that, well, you can have a return to dig all right, yeah. but, but when you're loading, say you're out yeah. moving muck or in the spreaders, just exactly. takes, the, takes the work out of it, doesn't yeah. it? Just one click, um, well, look, one click everywhere. Dave, the best thing we can do is uh, try, try, try and get some grass <laughs> in here. <laughs> when you have a TM on a probably a, a, a Pottinger that old that Trevor probably sold it at his last job. <laughs> <laughs> 
literally, because that's where it came from. <laughs> and you have an old 1100 and a Genesis, and uh, uh, an old uh, 7060 or a JF. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to try and have a bit of fun. That's it. That's and, it. Uh, so, good job. I hope it does well for you. Thanks for bringing it, and let's see how big. Well, put it to you, I guess. Big Jimmy will test it. He surely will. The proof of the pudding is on the page, isn't it? <laughs> and we'll see what he thinks later on. Good man. Thank Lovely. you. Thank Cheers, you, Gareth. Thank you.